Welcome to PayPod, the payments and fintech podcast. Listen along as we interview entrepreneurs and thought leaders from across the fintech world. From merchant services to microlending, from banking to Bitcoin, we cover it all. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of PayPod. I'm your host, Heather Bodie, and today we are going to be discussing the world of cashless payments. Joining me to help explore this topic is Carly Furman, the CEO of NIAX North America, a leading cashless solutions provider. Carly, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Heather. So to get us started, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you find your way into fintech and more specifically the payment side of things? Sure. I went to school at the University of California, Santa Barbara. I'm a Southern California girl at heart and have an economics degree. And after school, became a CPA and went the public accounting route because just wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to get into. And um, through that kind of public accounting experience, got exposed to biotech and fintech primarily. And I really just fell in love with the fintech space and was lucky enough um, through kind of how my career twisted and turned to be introduced to NIAX, who is a global payment solution provider and a leader in the cashless space. And that's kind of how a life in our careers take us. So it's been a cool opportunity. And, and I really can't imagine actually not being in payments now. So let's talk about NIAX. We know retailers have seemingly endless options when it comes to different payment solutions. Why should retailers work with NIAX? Sure. So, you know, really where our niche has been historically is in unattended cashless payments, which, you know, in light of especially COVID and the need for social distancing and contactless cashless payments has, has really kind of bolstered the visibility of what unattended payments is. But, you know, in a nutshell, what we do at NIAX is we're about democratizing the payment experience and being a full end-to-end cashless solution provider. So we develop and make our own hardware in-house and we do all handle all the certifications, the entire PCI environment, as well as give a full reporting and cloud-based solution and also act as the merchant on record or payment facilitator. So, you know, handle all the the KYC and easy onboarding. So our customers range from unattended operators who could have one vending machine as a gig to large enterprise operators in that are operating unattended kiosks and massage chairs and electric vehicle charging stations Mm -hmm. and, you know, Mm -hmm. multi-billion dollar um, food and beverage operations. So it's a really cool space to be in, but that's really, you know, where NICE focus has been. Since it's something that'll come up multiple times in our conversation, I want to touch real quickly on the acronym EMV. Can you tell us a little bit about the difference between the sort of a traditional use of a card that sort of swipe and sign versus what it means to have an EMV transaction? Sure. Yeah. When we're talking about EMV, that's actually using the the chip that is now on a lot of the credit cards that we all have. So in the U.S., it's really been accelerated over the past few years by the card brands, ensuring that the card issuers were getting out EMV-enabled cards. EMV stands for Europay, MasterCard, and Visa. But really all that means is using the chip in the card to make a contact, so inserting it in a payment terminal or tapping the card or being able to use it in a, you know, with Apple Pay or Google Pay versus the traditional um, way of mag swipe, which is just using that static strip on the back of a card and swiping it, which of course is, is really not secure um, mm-hmm. since information is not dynamic and you know, really was opening up to a, a ton of counterfeit card fraud. We're going to get to uh, security and fraud and those are things a little bit later. But before we go there, I want to talk a little bit about the consumer experience, but also adopting the cashless experience with the, the retailers. Consumers are craving efficient technology more and more. I mean, to be honest, I feel like the average person has come to expect it regardless of the size of the business that they're engaging with. What has been the biggest challenge for the retailers in adopting a cashless payments technology? I'd agree with you. I think that now it's, it's not, you know, do you have cashless payments? It's how you're accepting and, and, and making sure you're taking the entire breadth of cashless payments because I think you know we'll touch on it probably later in our conversations. But cashless payments, EMV transactions is really a requirement now. Not accepting EMV and only accepting a mag swipe card is not only is it not secure, but it's also giving consumers the impression on that their security is not that important. 
Mm. as well as I think retailers are limiting their options for taking cashless payments. We look at the unattended environment starting in April of this year, contactless payments, which are the number one growing type of card transaction right now, you know, being able to tap a card or pay with a mobile phone, that's going to be required to be run as an EMV transaction. So using that terminal that's certified to accept that dynamic chip payment versus there was kind of a legacy way you could still take a contactless payment, but only utilizing the technology that was still in that legacy magnetic strip. So I think, you know, when you're talking about, you know, almost the issues that retailers see, a lot of it has been with the perceived cost of adoption. But I really think I would challenge that and say that the cost is actually not to adopt the technology. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to be losing out on the on, mm-hmm. on contactless payments. You're losing out on people feeling like they can't pay in a secure way. And, you know, let's be honest, we know a lot of us aren't carrying cash. A lot of us aren't even carrying our wallets anymore. Right. To be losing out on that on, on a really huge growing amount of the consumer base, I think is it's definitely more costly than adopting the, the, the technology. It is wild how we do have the option to no longer carry a wallet because of digital wallet adoption. I feel like it happened to me a couple of years ago, but I'm still, I can like feel it in my guts. I had gone to a store, stood in line for way too long, got to the register, realized I didn't have my my wallet on me. And the, the sweet person behind the counter was like, well, don't you have it on your phone? And I was like, oh, I absolutely I do. do. <laughs> I absolutely do. Yeah. Now it's the primary way that I transact. So yeah, it absolutely is the way of the future. So payment solutions, um, they're paramount to the success of any business, but as a business owner, I mean, I know from personal experience from my entrepreneurial days that there are so many things going on in your mind at all times. Inevitably, you're going to have somebody who needs to troubleshoot an issue with the technology. How does NIAX approach providing quality customer support? Well, look, I think, you know, you're going to always have, especially in the business of unattended that, you know, we really focus on, um, you're going to always have a subset of the population that's going to want the more traditional support infrastructure. And that's very important that, you know, we have it's very important that we've bolstered up um, as we've grown our tech support and ensure that, you know, it's, it's flexible hours that work with our retailers. But I think also so many of us want a more self-serve type of training and experience. So we do a lot of webinars that of course are recorded. We have a university so people can understand how to use our backend management system as well as optimize some of the engagement functionality that we also offer with our cashless payment solution on their own time and be able to delve deeper into really fully utilizing our total solution as well as having a, a help bot and, and chat bots. So I think it's being able to ensure that whoever our, our customers are, we refer to our customers as operators. Our operators are that are using the NIAC solution, but they're able to really get that kind of self-help and training that they need in a manner that is easily digestible for their learning style. Now, as promised, let's go back to something that we touched on a little bit earlier. Let's talk security and privacy. Data breaches when it comes to credit card payments seem to be more and more common, but I think that's particularly when we're talking about the days before chip and PIN transactions. What is NIAX's approach and philosophy when it comes to security? So, I mean, I think first and foremost, when we're talking about what our commitment is to our customers as a payment solution provider, before everything else, it's to be able to accept any and all available payments in the most secure manner. Everything else is is icing on the cake, right? When we're talking about engagement and loyalty programs and all these other great soft features that we do offer. But first and foremost, the security is paramount. So from our standpoint, we provide the entire infrastructure. So we have a proprietary skipping server mechanism that relies on multiple redundant PCI DSS level one servers. We handle all of the EMV. So our devices are L1, L2, which is the contact list on the device and the contact certifications to accept EMV transactions, as well as the end certifications with our processing partners globally and tons of other certifications. But to really ensure that optimal secure environment is, is really what is crucial to us. Let's shift to regulation and compliance. What does the legal framework look like around EMVs? And what are the benefits of maintaining a high compliance standard? When we're talking about EMV acceptance, it's it's kind of been phased in in the U.S. by different verticals. So actually fuel and now unattended retailers were one of the last waves to have some kind of EMV requirement. So while it's still allowed to do the traditional swipe card being able to use what we call the mag swipe kernel. So again, that static information that's housed in the back of a card to do a contactless transaction 
is going to be disabled by the card brands. So, you know, when we're Mm. talking about benefits and one huge one is to actually be able to take, we see now 30% plus of NIAX US transactions coming through are contactless. So if someone isn't actually utilizing a fully compliant EMD solution, they're going to be losing this, this massively growing trend of transaction types. Additionally, chargebacks. So who actually gets the chargeback if a credit card transaction is fraudulent that is passed from the issuer to the acquirer and they're to the retailer. So there's fees now associated, there's blocking of the main type of growing transaction contact list, as well as we see that there's less failures of the transactions when EMV transactions are enabled. Right. I feel like again, back to this memory of swiping at every terminal, I feel like it you know, one in five times they would ask you to go ahead and swipe again and go ahead and swipe again. And I don't have that experience at all with this sort of chip and tap technology. 100%. It's fascinating. So what do you see for the future of cashless payments? I mean, if we're looking long-term by long-term, I mean like five, 10 years down the road. Yeah. I think we're going to see an increase in omni-channel payments, right? You know, I think that in some ways feels a bit buzzy, you know, of a word now, but it really does make sense, right? The world's getting smaller. We need multiple, our retailers need multiple ways to be able to to sell their products and services. So an increase in omni-channel and transparent and efficient payment methods. I also think we're going to see a huge increase in alternative payment methods or APMs. So social payments, um, of course, cryptocurrency, and even being able to ensure that a contactless, you know, whether it's a wearable, your phone is not only backed by a credit card, but by any of these APMs. So that, that ease is going to be, is crucial. What's next for NIAX? Any exciting offerings or projects or partnerships? Anything you can let us in on? Oh my gosh, there's so much. It's just <laughs> crazy um, in a good way, right? Yeah. But when we're looking at the U.S. specifically is our rolling out of additional alternative payment methods through a universal QR code. So being able to accept PayPal and Alipay and Venmo um, on the device with a universal QR code. So having one easy user experience to be able to take any and all alternative payment methods, both social payments, Asian alternative payment methods. That's something that I think is going to really start taking off more and more. I'm incredibly impressed by the resurgence of the QR code. I feel like it, it had its day, it disappeared. And then if there is any sort of silver lining from the pandemic, seeing it come back and, and make so many interactions so much more efficient has been really surprising. I did not expect it. <laughs> um, all right. We're going to close out with a segment we do on every show. Five questions, rapid fire. Carly, are you ready? I think so, Heather. <laughs> okay. <Let's do> <laughs> Make a prediction about the changes in the immediate future of cashless payments in general. What do you expect will happen in the next 12 to 24 months? Huge increase in contactless payments and need for and desire for alternative payment methods in the U.S. What's one cool piece of payment or finance related technology you've come across recently that impresses you? I think the ability to take tap on phone payments is super cool without any hardware. And we're going to see a lot more of that. In the next five years, most people will make a purchase with either Bitcoin, Apple Pay, or some other uh, tap product. Which one and why? Both, because they're synonymous with each other. So Apple Pay um, and mobile wallets is a way to make the payment, which is going to be funded by alternative payment methods like cryptocurrency and APMs. What's one piece of advice you have for someone considering the payments or financial technology industry as a career? And I would be remiss not to say we're recording the day after National Women's Day. If it is specific to being a woman in fintech, that would make it even better. Do it. Get into this industry. At the end of the day, no matter how the world is changing, everyone's going to always need to pay for something. So this is incredibly dynamic. Um, tons of job stability. And I think women's insights as you know, the ones who traditionally are running households and have you know, just our unique point of view, we need more women in fintech. Yes, 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 yes. What's the best business advice you've ever received and from whom? Don't turn down an opportunity. Hmm. Just don't say no. Oh my gosh. Can you say more about that? Again, speaking about women, I think a lot of times too in in technology roles, right? There's that cliche um, imposter syndrome. But mm-hmm. I was once given great advice by by one of my first bosses, who was also a woman, who told me everyone has to do something the first time. So you might as well just be the one to figure it out and take that plunge. And that's always kind of been something that I've reminded myself. 
you have the confidence in yourself, that you have a good support system and way to figure things out. Just don't say no, you'll be able to figure it out. I needed to hear that today too. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that does it for our show today. Thank you, Carly, so much for joining us. If folks want to get in touch with you or learn more about NIAX, where can they find you? Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, Carly Furman, and also NIAX.com. You can go to our website and that's how you can get more information about NIAX and, and you know, reach out to our entire NIAX family. Great. Thank you so much for joining us, Carly. Thank you, Heather, for having me. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, head on over to sorepay.com forward slash podcast to subscribe on your podcast listening platform of choice. That's S-O-A-R-P-A-Y dot com forward slash podcast.